You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. And she's with the shits early. I hear it. <laughs> Kathy Griffin. <laughs> Woo! Kathy Griffin is here. We're going to have some candle plugs. Don't yes. worry. <laughs> Always in trouble. Always in trouble. How are you this morning? I am so excited to be uh, alive and able to work. Yes. Because what I've been through, mm-hmm. May 30th, 2017, um, my the walls caved in on my career because I took a photo with a Halloween mask of Donald Trump with ketchup all over it. Mm-hmm. And then the Oval Office, the White House, for the first time in history, uh, the Department of Justice, they put me under a two-month federal investigation. Oh, really? And they were considering charging me with, wait for it, it's, this has never happened in the history of our country, conspiracy to assassinate the President of the United States. Wow. And I just want people to know, you can hate that picture all you want, but it was not illegal. Yeah. So part of my Laugh Your Head Off tour, if you get it, Laugh Your Head Off. <laughs> but I'm both. Thank you. I'm leaning in. <laughs> is, you know, I mean, it's a it's a comedy show, so don't worry. It's not like a lecture on the First Amendment. But honestly, it's a First Amendment issue. Right. And the president, I mean, by the way, I know you can't see my air quotes, but mm-hmm. I, I call him the president. Because he's so stupid. One time he tweeted, I'm proud to be your precedent. <laughs> it's like when he called the wife Melanie. Yeah, yeah. Okay, for me, it's Melanie forever. Like, Melania's <laughs> no over. Melania. It's Melanie. Because if he can't even get her name right, I don't have to. How bad Do you did regret they attack that you? at all? Attack oh, me? Are you kidding? Yeah, how bad did they attack you? I don't you? regret it one bit. Mm-hmm. Because I learned so much. So, um, first of all, I was in the middle of a 50-city tour. Mm-hmm. So, when Don Jr., or as I call him, Eddie Munster, because he's not, like, fully formed. I'm sorry, but oh I'm sorry. God. This is a family that's going to call Valerie Jarrett an ape. I will call him an ape right back. Go. Listen, all land is prohibited here. Go. Thank go. you. Yes. First of all, he is not fully formed. Teresa Guidice from The Real Housewives has more of a forehead than he does. So screw Don Jr. and the other one, the blonde one, date rape. Now, the reason I say that, <laughs> you heard me. Oh, I used the you wrong heard word, me. not prohibited. Yeah, the thing you, you heard me. Is good I just here. cannot no. believe that anyone <laughs> would consensually have sex with any of the Trumps. But. Um, yeah, so Don Jr. started a campaign, got me fired for my once a week, you know, once a year gig on CNN. Mm-hmm. And it was just crazy. So I didn't know at the time, I called the Trump wood chipper, but they'd done it to politicians, but they hadn't done it to like a quote celebrity, right? right? Mm-hmm. And so they put me kind of in the same machine. This was before the Weinstein stuff, mm-hmm. before Me Too. I don't know if that photo would have gotten that reaction if I had done it then, you know what I mean? But um, they came at me and I lost my. Entire career in 24 hours. Wow. So the White Did House. You really know you're a comedian. Like, honey, you, you the White House the was working in tandem with Harvey Levin and TMZ. The Daily Beast did an article about it. Wow. And, you know, AMI media, all this stuff coming about David Pecker owning everything from the Inquirer to Us Weekly. Um, they did have been doing nothing but hit pieces on me. One of them was they said that I'm going bald and have lupus, which is, I get it, it might sound funny, but when you work in Hollywood, you know, buyers, meaning the same five white guys who sign every check in Hollywood, because people should know <laughs> there's five white guys who sign ev- checks in Hollywood and no one else can. So Is one I'm, of them out of his job now? or he's Les Moonves? Oh, I, you don't even know. I hope you read my thread. I, I did. sure I did. Yeah. did you, what about the text I sent to Julie Chen? I saw that. That's right. Yeah. Well, we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. I'll tell you why. We got lots to unpack. We're fine. We'll come back to that. We're fine. We'll come back to Les Moonves. Right now, fuck Donald Trump. Go. Fuck Donald Trump and the family and Feckless and the whole gang. Yes. Because it's the first time in the history of this country that a sitting United States president has used the Oval Office, the first family, once again, that's in air quotes, but also the entire right-wing media. And I hate to say the mainstream media picked it up because I was breaking news in a bad way. Although you are talking to the seventh most Googled person of 2017 in the world there for all the wrong reasons. Okay. No, for all the wrong reasons. Hey, people, people think I'm an ISIS. Now, I don't was know. Was anybody supportive of you, though? Was there any media outlet that was like, okay, I, this is a violation of the First Amendment? Not a media outlet at all because it was like it was such a great like sort of breaking news story and you know, let me, I'm going to be honest. When you are a 57 year old woman who is on television, you know, I've won two Emmys, I have a Grammy for Best Comedy Album, one of only three women in the history of the Grammys to win, myself, Lily Tomlin, and Whoopi. You know, I tried to like do my thing, and um, this has never happened. And I don't believe that a president should be able to keep an American citizen from making their living. So then the Department of Justice called the next day. And that is not a fun call to get. And they said, we're putting you under an open 
and did investigation. I was on the no-fly list what does for that two mean? months. You, you can't so, fly at all on planes? No, I was on the no-fly list for two months. So they terrorist. called your cell phone and you just answered? No, like, they called my it? lawyer. Oh, okay. And they said, <laughs> so you couldn't fly she's in trouble. For two months. That's right. I couldn't make a living. They didn't I want you to work. I, well, I, let me tell you the first call I got. I'm not kidding. First call I got, Cat Williams. Cat okay. Williams. <laughs> Cat Williams. So we've been friends for a long time. Mm-hmm. And he said, they done did this to a white lady? And I said, hi, Cat. Um, that's usually how he starts his conversations. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And uh, I just texted him, by the way, because I'm so glad he won the Emmy for Atlanta. Because mm-hmm. oh, yeah. that performance was so Amazing. unexpected and great. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, we've been pals for a long time. And I just, I just think he's a genius. Like, mm-hmm. I think he's just got it. He's just... I don't even know if he could describe why he's so funny. He right. just has it. Mm-hmm. Cat and cat. But anyway, cat, so cat and cat and Kathy, <laughs> that's right. So he called me and he goes, get out a piece of paper. I said, okay. I dutifully got it. He goes, get out a pen. I said, okay. Because, you know, you never know what Cat's going to say. Mm-hmm. Right. He goes, I want you to write down the names of the people who call you today that are unconditionally supportive of you and also are going to say, you know what, I'm going to do something about it. Um, like Kat did an Instagram post, he gave me a great shout out in his last Netflix special. And he said, at the end of the day, you're going to know who your real friends are. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, there were three names. Mm. Wow. Really? Who and else? I was like, Kat Williams and who else? Hey, you know what? <laughs> I don't even know these guys that well, but let me tell you, I'm going to be honest. None of the women had my back. Mm. Not one. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, you know, like I said, I'm 57. Can you, how many women over 50 that are, if you don't mind my, bragging at this level of the game all right let's face it it's me wanda ellen well she was never gonna ellen's not gonna do well, ellen's over 60 but she's yeah. not she would never yeah, yeah. help me in that way Whoopi, um, maybe you don't think Whoopi was great mm-hmm. Whoopi was great because she's been through all sorts of stuff and the other people on the list were uh jamie fox wow. jamie fox called but he made a really great statement like he wasn't like oh you know get over it like he really said like this is important and comics should shine light on things, whether it's good or bad mm-hmm. and, you know, be funny, but also it's okay to start a debate and all this other stuff. And then uh, Jim Carrey, who I also don't even know very well, mm-hmm. but when you're having a day like that where you're on the news every two seconds and you're fired and then Donald Trump, Donald Trump is tweeting again, we don't just want her fired, we want to we want to ruin her entire life. Mm-hmm. That's so crazy to have a vendetta against somebody because They're still doing of a it. picture. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I, I gave you donkey today. And I, I didn't give you donkey today for what you did because <laughs> I don't care about that. Yeah. But I knew the backlash that you would receive from yeah. it. So I'm like, why put yourself through that yeah. over Donald Trump? Because you got to stand up. And this, you know, I've known this moron for since the 90s. I met him when he was, I was on this show called Suddenly Susan in the 90s. Mm-hmm. And I met him in the 90s. He had like mm-hmm. three lines. And, you know, he's actually hired me twice to roast him. So it was such a BS that he acted with the pearl clutching. He can't clutching. take a joke. He can't. Honey, I went to the White House Correspondents' Dinner, where, by the way, Michelle Wolf did a great job. Yeah. So she yes. got a bad deal, too. I think her Netflix show got canceled because of Trump. I think Trump I did didn't make a call uh, yeah. behind I, I do. I absolutely but did you, did that. Hello? Did you, did you I mean, really anticipate the backlash? No. Did you think it would be that bad? I thought it would be an entertainment story for two days. You know, I've done this wow. before. I took a picture one time where there was a guy... A man's, it was a feminist statement, a man's hairy hand using his scissors to cut my tongue off. Like, every so often I'll do a picture to stir up a conversation, as they say. How did you survive, though? Honey, I hunkered down, and the death threats are still coming to this day. Um, I did a show recently in, uh, Randy, where'd the guy have the knife? A knife? Yeah, Houston. Wow. That knife? He ran up on you with a knife? Yeah. Because they think you're unpatriotic. They think I, you guys... People think That's I'm in crazy. ISIS or Al Qaeda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, by the way, here's the funny part. My 98 year old alcoholic mother who drinks a box of Franzia wine a day, and I'm not a <laughs> spokesperson for Franzia, but she can drink you bastards under the table. And I'll tell you right now, 98. Um, the surrealness of on that day when I'm like sobbing and it's all over for me, and then my mother calls and she's, you know, hard of hearing. And she goes, Kathleen, of all the clubs, why did you join Al Qaeda and ISIS? Why couldn't you just start stamp collecting? So being, like I said, 57, and I said, Mom, I don't think ISIS is recruiting a lot of Irish American comedians right now. Um, and, you know, I, I couldn't believe someone showed me a survey that said 60 million Americans believed I had joined ISIS. Like I said, I'm laughing now. Wow. I wasn't then. And you then Harvey know how the picture was going to be perceived, though, right? Oh, I think. Well, first of all, I think he deserves it. So I stand by that picture 100%. I will tell you I'm bitter, though, because the photographer, Tyler Shields, wouldn't give me the copyright. Right. And that's a picture that's changed my life forever, irrevocably. I heard it was his idea, too. 
Well, well we kind of, I, I mean, I wanted to do a photo to shame Trump. You know what I mean? Gotcha. I really did. And if you remember like one time, he was going after Megyn Kelly, who I, I can't stand her. And trust me, I don't want to stick up for her. But he did say there was blood coming out of her eyes, blood coming out of her wherever. And so it was kind of like, all right, let's do a picture where there's blood coming out of his wherever. And, mm. you know, it was a mask. And so I, I knew people would know I wasn't holding an actual severed head. Trump right. with a bloody butt would have been fine, I think. It, I'm sure it's quite crusty yeah. down there. I'm sure it's... <laughs> I don't know how Melanie puts up with it. I think uh, he and Melanie have some sort of written statement where it's like a once a year it. thing they and gotta, then... They, they probably don't even sleep, but they don't sleep in the same bed, I'm what sure. What if she gives herself Rohypnol? She met Rufy herself. <laughs> oh, my goodness. To get... What? I have no fear anymore. No, I do not have one fuck left to give. I don't. There you go. Give me a dollar. I just don't give a fuck. Not one. I don't give a shit anymore. So what happened in Houston, you got to explain that story. So you, you're doing your show and somebody jumps up out the crowd? Every every show, there's death threats. All right. There was um, a protest in Charlotte, which can I have a little props just for going to Charlotte? Okay. <laughs> Charlotte's so, a great place. Well, you know Not what? in her position Not right now. Not with MAGA hats. Not with MAGA hats. You got you, got you. Come on. So, yeah, I know the black side of Charlotte. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm from South Carolina. Well, though. let me yeah. say, and this is, you know, uh, this is just the truth. I have actually gotten a much diverse, much more diverse audience since this photo. Because black people right. coming out. I think we people realize <laughs> if it could happen to me, it can happen to right. you. Mm -hmm. And it has. Like Trump has, I was like the one they kind of tried it out on, right? So they had Don Jr. get me fired first and do a whole sort of press tour. And then, you know, obviously they tried to get Michelle Wolf and they tried to take her down. They did. I really think they got her yeah, Netflix yes. shows canceled. I wrote a whole thread about it because I was in the room and I was the only comic in the room. She did great. Mm -hmm. Two Republicans left early. And then they tried to start a Twitter thing saying everyone left the room. They didn't. And she did a great job. But when you've got Sarah Fuckabee sitting there looking at her, clutching her pearls, yeah. like, oh, my Lord, I'm just so shocked at all this. Get me a mint julep. Um, <laughs> it doesn't help. Because Netflix know? does not cancel shows. And when they do, they don't make big announcements about it. Right, like, right. I was like, huh? And she's also a, a lady who's on her way up. So yeah. I want to support her. That actually got her a lot more recognition. Good. Right. And she then, But then it. the show got canceled. So you would think people were more aware of her. But then, I, I really am glad you guys picked up on that. And, you know, a year ago, people would have thought you were crazy if you would have said, I think Trump canceled a Netflix show. But let me tell you, I live and work in Hollywood and everyone, it's its really pathetic. They're all scared shitless of this guy. And I'm like, the orange guy that hosted The Apprentice? Are you kidding me? I mean, the executive producer of Celebrity Apprentice is now our president. So he has unlimited power in it's this country and he's petty as fuck. It's unbelievable. He's also, I know him well. He's not smart. You know. I lost everybody that day. It wasn't the Dixie Chicks mm -hmm. where the artistic community supported me. I lost <laughs> left, right, and center. I lost the veterans. I'd been working with two veterans group. I've been I performed in Iraq and Afghanistan and Kuwait and Uzbekistan. You know, Trump can't find those places on a map. Right. He's right. not going to Afghanistan. He's too scared. They're gonna. Uh, let's state you know. a course. Okay. A redneck tried to kill you. Yeah, I, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll perform in the, you'll okay, perform so this guy YouTube. shows up. By the way, it's online. You can see the pictures. Mm -hmm. If you want to just look up, like, um, uh, you know, I don't even know, well, like, Trumper at Kathy Griffin show. Okay. He's got a MAGA hat. First giveaway. He's wearing a shirt mm -hmm. that he must have had custom made, God love him, with nothing but pictures of Trump all over his shirt. Mm. Like many pictures. And then, and he just he just starts waving a knife, waving a knife Why outside in front. Yes. Wow. Um, or it may have been right after the show. Starts waving a knife, and luckily, you know, I don't mean to sound like the fifth runner up on American Idol, but I do have the greatest fans in the world, and so I had people that don't need to be doing this, like people that are just leaving a show. They were like calling the police, mm -hmm. and they got photos of this guy and video and stuff like that. But I just kind of need to keep getting out there like this and telling folks it's not over. Do you know what you need? It's not over. You need what? Fruit of Islam security. L do you yes. have a number? Of course <laughs> I do. Whose cell number do you have? I, I have back in the we, we can call number. Honorable Minister Lewis So do they, okay. have, do they have extra security <laughs> for you at every show now? Yes. So you have extra security, of course. Yes. Okay. You need FOI. You need the brothers in bow ties, man. I'm telling yes. you. Yes. 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 Now let's now, talk about Les Moonves uh, for a second. Oh, fuck him. Right? Can you believe this guy? <laughs> and that's another guy, you know, very Trumpian in that way. Um, I mean, I haven't been on CBS for a while. So um, when they were, you know, this is an interesting story. When they were um, doing The Late Show with Craig Ferguson, I like Craig. I did the show many times. And one night he I said, I, I was doing a talk show on, on Bravo for two years, which got canceled because Andy Cohen hates me. Um, and he also is lacking, if, uh, he's lacking a skill set. He so tried he to gave... sniff cocaine with you too, but we'll talk about that. Yeah, I, I'm not, we'll that's talk about all weird that. stay, to me. Stay the course. Okay. okay. So anyway, um, uh, what happened was I got 
like a little bit of a tip that Craig Ferguson was tired of doing the show. And as a female, a lot of people don't realize, honestly, it hasn't been since the dear departed Joan Rivers, Joan Rivers. Mm -hmm. that no a late female night. has had a network nightly mm -hmm. late night talker. Mm -hmm. So yes, Chelsea was on cable. That's yeah. awesome. Full Frontal is once a week with Sam B. That's awesome. Robin, Robin the Monique had her show right. on BET cable. Mm -hmm. Awesome. But it's time to like, come on, it's time to let like one of us get a show, right? Mm -hmm. right. And so I lobbied hard to try to get that show. And a guy at CAA, an agent named Jeff Jacobs at CAA said, oh, Leslie said they're not considering females at this time. I go, well, you know, that's illegal to even say. Like, he just so you know. Asked, I heard he auditioned some, but he already knew that they weren't going to get it. Right. And so I'm going to be honest. I started thinking, OK, I'm not going to get the job. Clearly, they're going to think I'm too old. I'm too ugly. My nose is too big. All the stuff I've been told my whole career. Because, you know, I've been doing this. I did my first commercial when I was 17. Mm -hmm. I'm 57. So I know, the, I know when they're not going to even consider you. So I'm not kidding. I sort of started thinking, I think Aisha Tyler would have been great for that job. Nothing against James Corden. I didn't even know who he was. But I thought, Aisha's so smart. She was already on the talk. Yeah. I actually took her out to dinner. Mm -hmm. And I go, are you, like, gunning for that job? Because I think you'd be perfect. Like, you're smart. You're a woman of color. Let's make some history. And she said, I met three times and nothing happened. And I thought, I wonder if they took those meetings. Because they thought, what if Big Mouth Kathy Griffin someday says Just that show. they said, we're not even considering women, right? females. Wow. And so, um, by the way, Aisha's going to kill me for revealing this, but I just think she's so smart and she mm -hmm. would have been a great hire and she was already beloved, obviously, by CBS mm -hmm. to be on the talk. So that's kind of my new mission in life. And I'm doing the Laugh Your Head Off tour because I think it's important that people know this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I promise it's not, you know, like I said, it's not a lecture. I have plenty of fun stories about who my next door neighbors were during this entire ordeal. <laughs> who are, who are they? Excuse me. Their names are Kim Kardashian West and Kanye oh, you Kardashian live in West. Oh, no, this is when they Bassus. were in Bel Air. Oh, gotcha. Really? gotcha so they gotcha. just moved a couple months ago back to the Bassus, Okay. which I think they bought the entire town. And sometimes late at night, I would hear them printing money. Mm -hmm. You know, because they I think Chris <laughs> just made a deal with the U.S. Mint and said, let's just let them print their own money. Did you know they were avid Trump supporters then? Uh, they weren't. Okay. They were absolutely not because we had those conversations. Although, I mean, talking to Kanye, like, it, he doesn't like complete sentences with me. But um, he does that with nobody. He, yeah, he's like yeah. free thinker. But Kim was all Hillary all the way, and um, you know, also we didn't really talk about politics that much. But I was also very fascinated into going over to their house. Can I give you one tidbit? Please. Tell us. Okay, get this. Because don't act like you don't want to know. Like your, your listeners don't want to know. We do. Okay. So uh, Kanye, they still have all the mannequins from the famous video. Oh, okay. Really? How awesome is that? Like, oh. remember when the, the mannequin of like, Just, they're in the house. Like randomly. He's like, you want to see the mannequins? I was like, no, but I'll take your word for it. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? Creepy. Squad goals. Mannequin room. Well, they don't have that no more. I've been to the new house. Where are the mannequins? I don't know. There's nothing in there. It's just like space. There's no well, that new house. Um... That new house is as big as the city. Can yeah, we be honest? I mean, that new house, it is a There's gigantic... There's no Fifty Shades of Grey room with the mannequins. There has to be. I mean, there just has to be. But like, that's in that's the way I'm able to kind of tell the story in the show because I honestly think, truly, every American needs to hear the story. And by the way, after I was um, uh, finally taken off the no-fly list, I couldn't get any work here because so many people <laughs> thought I was an ISIS. Um, like I said, I could laugh now. So I went overseas, mm -hmm. and I do have a big bag over there. What's in that bag? Did we start you? What is it in that bag? <laughs> Stop it. There is just bowling balls. It's really heavy. But um, but anyway, so I was able to work overseas, and I um, well, oddly enough, the picture that almost took me down was the picture that allowed me to truly tour the world. Mm -hmm. I went everywhere works. from Auckland, New Zealand to Reykjavik, Iceland. Mm -hmm. But they put me on the freaking Interpol list, so I was detained. I played 15 countries in 23 cities. I was detained at every single wow. airport. So they take amazing. your passport. They take your phone. They go away for an indeterminate amount of time. And let me tell you, they put you in a room and you sit there thinking, I don't know what's going to happen. When you're in, a de in, you're in detention in Singapore where it's illegal to chew gum, and, you know, I'm sitting there going, you know what? I'm just an old lady that wants to tell jokes. I'm just trying to make people laugh you had to here. Get to the airport the day before to try to catch oh, a flight. Oh, it was a whole thing. Every airport, you know what I had to do? Every airport, like I did a show at, you know, let's say I was in Sydney, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I got to do a show at the Sydney Opera House. So very honored and stuff. But if I was leaving Sydney to go to whatever my country was next, I would have to alert two journalists in Australia, two journalists in the country I was going to, 
and I had a former CIA um, uh, officer that I was talking with. I would give him my itinerary so that whenever stuff would go down, number one, I was terrified of ever missing a show. That was the most, the mo- biggest concern. Right. Didn't want to let people down. Didn't want people to think something too. At the yeah, same time. yeah. And and by the way, in a country like Singapore where it's illegal to be gay. And I have a lot of LGBT fans. You know, I I want them to feel like it's a safe space, at least Mm -hmm. within the show. Oh, by the way, sidebar, honey, those down low gays in Singapore, the minute you get them in the room, honey, I've never seen so many knockoff Hermes bags and Pucci scarves. (laughs) They were like, hey, girl, hey, welcome to Singapore. They're in there chewing gum and being gay. Oh, chewing gum. It was heaven. It was like a pride fest. So, you know, um, it was just, but I will say it was very tense to be detained at every airport because Mm. to this day, I don't know what the government put on my freaking passport. Right. But it makes everybody's eyes turn into pinwheels whenever they scan it. Yeah, they treated you like you you got me too. Yeah. Like you're laughing Weinstein or something. It's never happened in the history of this country. I will tell you the closest time it's ever happened is there was an amazing triple threat actress named Eartha Kitt. Now, Mm -hmm. I'm older. I go back. And um, I was exposed to her when I was a kid because my mom and dad used to buy albums. And there was a series, there was a Broadway series called New Faces. And that's where I was first exposed to her. So younger people might know her as one of the cat women on the Batman series. Yes. Mm-hmm. But she was singer, dancer, Broadway actress, star. And very famously in 1965, um, Lady Bird Johnson, who a lot of liberals think LBJ, Civil Rights Act, that's great. Lady Bird Johnson invited to the White House a group of African Americans, Harry Belafonte, et cetera, to express um, how they felt about how the um, movement was going about civil rights movement. Mm-hmm. So Eartha Kitt was honest. And she was honest about what it's like to be a black woman in this industry at that time. And whatever she said to Lady Bird, Lady Bird Johnson got her so blacklisted, she had to leave the country for decades. Wow. And in those days, you know, obviously they didn't have social media and they obviously scared the hell out of her to do an interview, even in like one of the old timey magazines or something. Mm -hmm. And because I kept looking for, is there a precedent? And that's the closest thing I came to. So I would encourage your listeners, if you want to Google, you know, Eartha Kit YouTube blacklisted, it's a really compelling story, what wow. they put that woman through. I'm, I'm going to look so that up. So she was finally able to come back, and like Eddie Murphy put her in boomerang, and that yeah. was great. Marcus. But that's what it, <laughs> yeah, that's what it takes. What's your issue with uh, Andy Cohen? Who's a friend to the Oh, room? Andy Cohen as, okay, well, good for you. Um, what, <laughs> to the room. Yeah, what's his skill set? What do you think his skill set is? <laughs> okay, thanks. Anyway, so look, I... He's very well versed on The Real Housewives. Oh, good for him, which is a show that they co-opted from a show called Desperate he's Housewives. A on... Like, if you're in there, if you're there, watch what happens live, so yeah. much happens. So he's good at, like, getting in and out You've of getting people drunk and getting them to say things that then get them in trouble, and then he calls Radar online and goes, hello, it's uh, not Andy Cohen. Allegedly. <laughs> but no, my issue is, look, I was at NBC Universal for a long time. Um, my executive there was Jeff Zucker. He was tough on me. The whole time I was paid, you know, a fraction of what the guys got. So my joke is when I hear women saying they get 80 cents on the dollar, I go, where do I sign up? Right. When you're a female comic, (laughs) try five cents on the dollar. And so um, Zucker was just, you know, once again, I have been just tortured by like, I call them the old white dinosaurs, like 60 year old white guys my whole life. And it's one thing after another. And obviously it's I'm an outspoken person. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you can probably name the comics that are female on one hand. And what's the cocaine story? Oh, it's just that I only did that. Oh, okay. Well, first of all, <laughs> when I started, he was like, um, like I think it was in the publicity department, and um, I didn't know he was like he was basically trying to be me. Like, and even in his books, he steals some of my jokes. And when he does the tour with my former friend Anderson Cooper, he does some of my jokes on the tour. And their tour is first of all on the Watch What Happens Live. None of the questions are real. They're not from Twitter. Um, Michael Davies, the producer, told me that. He said the staff just writes them. And I did the show twice. And, you know, I don't trust him. And so uh, he is, uh, it's unprecedented in the history of television that the guy who decides which shows get to stay on the network fires me, but gives himself a show that gets magically picked up every single year. So I think that he's just not a trustworthy, honest guy. I don't think he's talented. He's not a comic. He didn't earn it. He's been riding on people's coattails. And, you know, why does he feel like you don't like him because he replaced you on the New Year thing? And he was like, he had nothing to do with it. Oh, it was long before that. He was just an awful boss. You know, I mean, remember for six years, I did my life on the D list for eight episodes a year. And they would, you know, we would shoot for six months. 
all over, you know, all over my house and all this stuff. And, um, you know, that was even prior to the housewives. They had never even done a special. I taught them how to do a stand-up So you special. just don't fuck with Andy Cohen. Okay. Oh, I'll fuck with Andy Cohen. You think I'm afraid of him? <laughs> no, I mean like, we, no, <laughs> like, we like don't fuck with him. him. We, we don't cool like him. him. You don't hip hop lingo. Yeah, like, cool. Yeah. You don't oh, fuck oh, okay. Because white people would just say fuck him. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. But he tried know. to sniff coke with you too, though. Yes. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, I, I'm not a prude. Yeah. But <laughs> if I no, the reason I, I'll tell you why I took you. You don't have to be a prude to not sniff coke. Right? No, but I just want to say, if I first of all, like I said, I did have a talk show for two years on Bravo, which of course they canceled because we were competing for guests, and obviously I wasn't going to win that battle, but. If I had ever offered, you know, one of my guests, Jane Fonda or, you know, uh, T.I., if I ever, ever offered them Coke before taping and it got out, I would be way more ruined than the Trump picture. Mm-hmm. Like, I just, I wanted to point out because there's a double standard. There's gotcha. such a big, and that's a big topic of the day, as you know, double standards. Mm-hmm. And that was what bothered me. And that's what I think people should know is that. You know, that kind of behavior would never be tolerated by a female. And the other thing I want to say, and I do this a lot recently since the Trump incident, is I think that women in particular have to be more honest about their finances. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's one way that guys can keep us down is they're making their money and they're talking about it and they're making deals on the golf course and at, you know, strip clubs and getting lap dances. And I really think for the most part, female comics, we kind of do our job. You know, we do our job. I'm happy to go back to the hotel and get a tuna melt with my boyfriend. You know, I'm not like, what am I, what am I going to do? Have sex with like the, I mean, you could. an audience member? Like, <laughs> you could if you wanted to. I don't know one female comedian who does that. But, um, you know, the double standard does need to be pointed out. And I will say that the reason I'm telling you this is I have a reason. I've probably made about $75 million over the 40 years of my career. Mm-hmm. I have paid all these representatives 10%. Mm-hmm. And they all dump me. Wow. They all dump me because of a photo. A wow. photo that is totally mm. covered by the First Amendment, whether you like it or not. They all took my money when it was easy. But when the going got rough, they all flew the coop. So and nobody it, stood by your side that was part of your team. Have you seen me on TV? No. No. You said... F- I have two Emmys. I have eight nominations. Because I think an agent would at least be like, well, let's wait it out for a little while. Let it they calm down. Heat. Okay, so I then had to, you know, after a while... Um, I thought, well, I, I can at least get back on the road. The mm-hmm. one thing they can't stop you from, if you have the goods, mm-hmm. people will come to see you. Right. So I had my own agent at the time, Live Nation, the biggest promotion company, et cetera, saying, you know, you're not going to be able to sell 500 seats anywhere after what you've done. So then I said, okay, you know, get you in that. I'm going to show you mode. Right. So I um, decided to do a show at Carnegie Hall, mm-hmm. and I sold it out in 24 hours. Woo. Wow. Because I hired a Washington, D.C. marketing firm because L.A. just didn't get it. And I started, you're going to laugh, I started, Granny here started her first mailing list last February. <laughs> and that's how this tour is selling out. It's like so mailing list. in the mail? Like, email no, 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 list? email like list, flyers, oh, okay. text. Okay. So you said I was like, in the mail wait a minute. <laughs> right? Email list. Okay. Although, I have to tell you, one of the things I read in my act, because like I said, after time, even this stuff is funny, but I did get a lot of death threats in the old timey mail, like with stamps. <laughs> and, you know, Coming from but, Alabama. Honey, I wouldn't want to open those because there could be any type of anthrax anything. or something. Oh, you know, exactly. And so the out. FBI, I have to work with the FBI to this day because some of them I have to put in a Ziploc bag. And that's, those are considered what they call credible threats. Mm-hmm. And some of them are like in the, I'm not sure how scary this pile of mail is. Do you feel like the FBI wants to protect you? Or? I do. Okay. I do. Like, believe it or not, this thing hasn't turned me anti-government. Mm-hmm. Um, although, I also want your listeners to know that the Department of Justice spent your taxpayer dollars, which I know Cardi B is very concerned with, taxpayer dollars. She yes. wants to know where the money's going. Mm-hmm. Um, on a two-month investigation of Kathy Griffin. Mm. You know, big big member of ISIS here. Oh, gotta, yeah. Big, just, high, card-carrying member. We're just trying to make sure. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That's two all. months. You said, you, know, you said former friend Anderson Cooper. Yeah, because he turned on me that very day. Wow. And he made a tweet. He said, Kathy Griffin's disgusting. Really? Wow. He didn't give me a and call. That was your he didn't have to. Well, yeah, we did You know, we did CNN for 10 years. And let me tell you something. Mm. And I know I'm talking about misogyny you know, a lot and all that stuff. But the first two years I did CNN out of 10 years, I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me to ask to be paid. Mm, like, wow. that's the thing you I think. You never got paid for New Year's? Shouldn't the your first agent two years, have, have wow. negotiated that? Well, like, shouldn't your agent have been like, okay, honey, let's... Honey, Because I don't feel like it should be you. The people that... What I think is so funny is the right wing, which hates me, you know, more than anything. Although, mm-hmm. just, you know, I'm in better company now. Like, I'm in the new anti-GOP. I'm in the new pro-GOP ads. Mm-hmm. It's me, Cap, and Madonna. There you go. 
you know, at first it was just me with the head. So I feel like, A, I could win the Super Bowl someday Mm because this is American. You can do anything. Mm -hmm. And I also feel like now I've done a duet with Madonna. There you go. Mm -hmm. Now you've... um, No, hold on. Anderson Cooper. So, yeah, yeah, he tweeted. And then um, uh, what was really egregious to me, and once again, unprecedented, is first of all, can you imagine Sasha or Malia ever like tweeting that someone should get fired? So Don Jr. tweeting... And it actually getting me fired wow. is it's not how it's supposed to go here. And uh, I just wish that Anderson Cooper had not jumped on that bandwagon. And Jake Tapper already had come after me. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't have to say anything. Yeah. Did he ever reach out to you after that? And About say- five months later, and it was like a, like a pretty unfriendly text. Really? What did yeah, you say? He was like, how could you have put me in that position? How did you put him in a position? I didn't. You didn't tell him to tweet something? No. So, so, you, any so you feel like he could- with And by the way, I didn't, just so you know, I didn't. It was so heavy, and I'm not kidding, like so intense with the death threats and all this mm-hmm. other stuff. And I was in the middle of a 50-city tour, and um, by the next day, I did not have one single day of work ahead of me. Wow. wow. So I was 50 cities in. I'm 25 cities in. 25 cities were uh, – the cancellations were recorded on TMZ in real time, which they have never done. So then I, I uh, learned that Harvey Levin talks to Trump multiple times on the phone. You hate Harvey week. Levin. I hate Harvey Levin. Yeah. Yeah. He's a gay guy who's a MAGA. Like, he's a hardcore Trumper. Well, you know he hates Trump now, allegedly. Who? Harvey Levin. Why? Now, look at the website. I Let me tell you something about TMZ. Why would he hate Trump now? Because he said he, he can't stand by anything that Trump said. If you notice, they've kind of like... He'll go whichever way the positions. wind blows. Yeah, 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 Harvey yeah, yeah. goes whichever way the wind blows. But, you know, clickbait is one thing, but when you start putting people in real physical danger, you know, it's another. But also, I just think it's ironic that he's a gay guy. And I, I actually said to him one time, what do you think the Republican Party holds for you? You think they're going to have your back? I said, Jefferson Beauregard Sessions is rolling back rights every day. And um, that's what you should be paying attention to. And then I love when they, I love when the MAGA people give this, um, you just don't understand economics. Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, no, he's, a, he's an idiot and a racist. And I know him. Mm-hmm. And so I do think he came after me because he thought she's an easy target. So I have, Harvey no, Levin I thought you were easy target? No, 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 Trump. I, Trump. Trump. And I okay. think they coordinated. And my joke is, can you imagine if Barack Obama was calling Perez Hilton for policy advice? Like, that's how crazy things have gotten. That's that how Trump and Harvey are. They have that relationship. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But if you look at that website, um, and I've never said this before, but that website, I think, is highly misogynistic and racist. And I'll tell you why. That website, if you look at people of color... Uh, pound per pound, you can do a study today or yesterday or look back five days, whatever you want. They will show more people of color getting into trouble, fights, mug shots, than they will show people of color doing something good. I wow. think Chris and Brown would agree. That's right. <laughs> wow. And but and, but women also of a certain age. Once you and hit they 35, show women in bathing suits all the time. It's the, the cellulite picture, the... good jeans or good docs. I remember the Marion Barry headline was kind of weird. It was like crackhead. Yes. Mayor of Baltimore, whatever. What was DC? I forgot what Marion Barry was at. That yeah. Was he was. Weird. He was the mayor of DC. DC. Yeah. But I'm just saying, even even people of color that have done nothing wrong, they'll he'll just throw like you know unflattering photos up on purpose. I'm asking you to just take a good hard look at that website. And like I said, it's a fun guilty pleasure. I get it. But really, look at the way they treat women of a certain age and people of color. It's very consistent. So do you think that him not being cool with Trump anymore, is? you don't think that's real? No. I think, like I said, he'll do anything for clickbait. Gotcha. You know, and then, there, you know, and when people, I kind of love that all this stuff is coming out about David Pecker and AMI, like I said. But to have everyone coming at you, like, you know, people make fun of the Globe and the Inquirer. Except people who really believe it. And what I found out <laughs> is that found in- <laughs> aliens think I'm an ISIS. Um, and so, you know, they have Us Weekly. And these are publications that when you're, you know, a television person or a touring person, I mean, I've done all kinds of stuff, right? And, you know, this is the type of thing that even Hollywood agents believe. Like, they, they think TMZ is like the news. So yeah. has all the press banned you? Like, you can't do, no, no press is accepting you at all? I'm banned currently from... Uh, the View? No, I actually got to go on the View once. Oh, okay. So that was good. I thought okay. you were banned. Uh, I might. Well, you know, that's an always off and on banned, but I think I'm still okay <laughs> with that. But um, yeah, I'm trying to think of shows. I, I, you know, I'll tell you what. I'll, sh- I'll tell you shows I'm not banned from because the list of shows that won't have me is so long. And here's what they do: they rarely come out and say you're banned. Mm-hmm. It's just that, um, uh, like for example, you know, uh, what used to be live with Regis and Kathy Lee, mm-hmm. and then. Kelly and, you know, so I've been banned. I mean, not able to book me for like 15 years. 
So, you know, when you're trying to sell tickets for a tour, I don't have a network behind me. I don't have mm-hmm. a big producer. I don't have a Lorne Michaels. It's I'm a one-man band. I don't have a studio. I'm not, I'm not part of a movie franchise. You know, when um, when Snoop got in, you know, when they tried to say he was insinuating that he would kill the president, they didn't go after him right. because Trump doesn't have the balls to go after Snoop. And when Johnny Depp got drunk in a bar, you know, shock, and allegedly made a threat <laughs> to the president, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean team came in and took care of him thinking, OK, got to protect the movie franchise. A week later, he's taking a picture with his Make-A-Wish kid. I know that game. And so, <laughs> come on, Johnny. Johnny hasn't taken a, he has not taken a shower since that first movie. I'm sorry. Oh, he, he, no, he thinks he's a pirate. He thinks he's really a pirate. Oh, oh man. I'm like, Johnny, why are you wearing a patch? And he just goes, rrr, rrr, rrr. Oh. you know, Johnny. And so, so once again, they didn't, Morrissey, the singer, they didn't go after him, mm-hmm. but they knew. Kathy Griffin doesn't have a step network or a studio. No one's going to come to her right. defense. You would think and that so, women would have came to your defense. No. Damn. No. And that one hurts. I don't even have a punchline. I, that um, one stings. What is your issue with Julie Chen? No, I read that you said about Julie Chen. Okay, so right? I, I wrote, okay, mm-hmm. well, I, I DM'd her when the first day uh, the Leslie News came out. And I don't know Leslie that much, the well, but every time I would run into him, he'd say, oh, I love watching you on New Year's Eve. Julie and I sit in bed and watch you every year. And I would see him every year at some kind of event. I'd say, thank you. That'd be great. Um, and I wrote Julie. I DM'd her and I said, look, you know, I always want to, I don't want to throw the wife under the bus mm-hmm. if it was the hus- husband. You didn't want her to be affected by yes, what he'd done. Because we don't know yet what she knew or didn't know. Mm-hmm. And I'm a Hillary person. Like, I remember when Hillary took all that heat for standing by him and blah, blah, blah. And so I thought, I don't want to, I'm not, I don't want to do a girl on girl crime. And she stood by her husband. Yes. Sure. And and so I thought, all right, maybe, maybe he has a secret life. Mm-hmm. So I said to her, and I was really honest. And so Julie, if you want to put out this DM, I have no problem with it. I mm-hmm. said, look, you know, as you may or may not know, I'm still very much blacklisted and I want to work like anybody else. And I just want to make people laugh. And I didn't break the law and I have a story to tell. And I said, I would love to come on the talk. And I promise I'm not going to bring up Leslie. Like, this has to be really hard for you. So um, she never responded. OK, that's fine. And then I just started hearing more of the stuff about Les. And I cannot tell you how much of that sort of thing has happened to me during my career. Wow. You know, and remember, I was born in 1960. So all the stuff that we're finally talking about now, mm-hmm. you know, those of us a certain age, we're just used to it. Hearing oh, yeah, yeah, people, yeah. there was a guy named Mike Metavoy, really powerful guy. He sat me down one time, I think 15 years ago, and he goes, you're not going to be able to make a living. You're, you're not likable. Mm. And, you know, things like that. And I know you, you have that fire inside you as well. It's like when someone tells you you can't do something. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I've been dealing with that my whole career. While, by the way, the night before I played Sold Out Carnegie Hall, just to piss people off. Mm -hmm. I booked Radio City myself. Mm. And I said, you know what? And I broke a record. I'm the only comedian ever to do Radio City on a Monday and Carnegie Hall on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And I have more televised stand-up specials that I wrote every word of myself and produced 23. And I'm in the Guinness Book of World Records than any comedian, male or female, living or dead. And I'll tell you why. Because, look, I'm not Kevin Hart. I'm not Amy Schumer. I don't play stadiums. I get it. I'm thrilled to be playing 2,500 seat venues. I'm thrilled to be playing, you know, the Arsht in Miami Wednesday You're night. You're making a living, hall. though, regardless. I'm making a living. A but one. let me tell you, those legal bills are no joke. And they are mm. hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm. And I also lost a living for a year and a half. Mm. So, you but know, sure for you had a, a lot of money being... saved up, though. You said you made but I'm sure I have money saved, saved up. Mentally, that takes a toll on you, too. Just yes. the people that deserted you. Oh, I mean, have your back and... and went out of their way to write mm-hmm. like really nasty letters and they didn't know the whole story. And, you know, it, it really taught me that a lot. Hurts. It ter- taught me a lot. I found out that the tour cancellations were robocalls because, you know, the right wing is so mobilized. They mm-hmm. know how to, those MAGA folks, they know how to do the bot farms. The bot and, farms and the bot And stuff, I became yeah. part of an algorithm. So I will say also this to you guys and your listeners, if any one of you tweets something positive about me, you're going to get at first like a line of trolls, clearly not from America, with like, ISIS be bad lady red hair. Mm-hmm. Let's try it. Really? So do it. I'm going to tweet. Like, I, I love, love Kathy, Kathy Griffin. Griffin. She's so wait, hilarious. Will that up our followers? <laughs> well, it'll... Is it'll, it'll hashtag <laughs> at, what do you got? Hashtag at, at, I love well, Kathy Well, either, Griffin. either. Um... But even if you just put the words without a hashtag, Kathy Griffin and Twitter, you're going to see more things about me being an ISIS and a terrorist than you will about me being an award-winning comedian. Wow. And the reason I'm 
bragging and bringing all this stuff up is, number one, nobody else will do it for me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But number two, once I kick the bucket, I want younger women, people of color, LGBT folks to look at my story and go, you know what? That chick got beat up, but she didn't go down. Right. How did the LGBT people feel about you um, not liking Andy Cohen, Harvey Levin, and Anderson Cooper? Those are like top tier gays, right? Uh, the top gays had gays. my back. Okay. Gays and black Twitter had my back. And I am not kidding. From day one, I got calls and from good friends going, because I was like, all right, who can I talk to? Who not? Who, who's, I don't know who my friend is anymore. You know. And so, um, once again, black Twitter and the gays were ahead of the curve. So one of the things that actually made me laugh was a few days after the photo, someone sent me a video of a bunch of drag queens dressed as me carrying heads on Fire Island, (laughs) laughing, only like 10 guys, right? Right. But I was like, okay, they get the joke, Mm -hmm. you know? And the African-American community has been so good to me because you guys get it. Right. To be disenfranchised, to be looked at as something that you're not. To be, to be suppressed lived, by 60 year old white men. <laughs> to have your living taken <laughs> yes, away absolutely. from you. And to not like Donald Trump. Yes, yes, yes. What did you say on your tweets? Well, I haven't talking? looked at me see. Uh-oh. But oh, did, has Julie Chen <laughs> reached out to you? Um, I think that she will have to make a statement. And she's going through some things right now. That's probably. <laughs> well, she's going through some things. Herself. I got to be honest, the jury's out. You know what I mean? The jury's out. Like, and she needs to step up that, as a woman and for women of color and go, this is not okay or And they're acceptable. bringing up the Janet Jackson situation okay. with Julie Chen as Let well. me tell you something. I lived it. So when I read that article, and it's funny, I, 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 you know, journalists, I got to know a lot of journalists this year, and I was very gratified to say to them, this article is absolutely on track with what I have seen happen to many, many actresses and singers. And I said, look at someone as giant gigantically popular as Janet Jackson. And I don't doubt a word of it. So you got Leslie Moonves, this guy that's rubbing his dick on people and trying to sexually assault his own doctor at UCLA. But he's going to take down Janet Jackson because Mm. she didn't call and and cry. And cry. Mm -hmm. He wanted a tearful cry. And what about Timberlake? Timberlake, fuck him too. Timberlake calls and sobs to Leslie Moonves. Fuck you, Leslie. And no, fuck them all. I don't give a shit. I anymore. saw that email that the, uh, an exec from CBS wanted you to write to Trump. Sent you a okay. letter. Okay. Yeah, he's on the board of directors. He's not even he, talk about a dinosaur. What's his name? Arnie Copelson. Okay. And he was someone that I actually knew personally. And I remember, like, this is a typical conversation that happened honestly six months before the photo. And this, he wanted to reboot The Fugitive. He produced The Fugitive, the original movie with Harrison Ford. Mm-hmm. So he starts telling me um, at dinner at this restaurant, and uh, he says, we're going to reboot it, and we've got Harrison, and you know we've got to find the, uh, the female that was his wife who gets cur- killed, it's not a spoiler, early on in the film. And I said, well, Celia Ward, who played it in the original, is amazing and looks great, and why don't you, if you really want to reboot the movie with Harrison, he's like, she's not fuckable anymore. I wow. go, honey, you've never been fuckable. And so <laughs> wow. every time I would name a female, he'd go, not fuckable, not fuckable. Wow. And what year was this? Honey, it was six months before the Trump photo. It was 2017. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my gosh. So wow. I'm just telling you, I am the one, and yeah, yeah. nobody's going to support me, but I'm the one bad bitch who's going to stand here and go, don't be thinking Hollywood's all liberal and everything's okay now and Oscar's so white. No, they're behind. And Oscar So White is amazing because it forced them. And what I have learned is you can do petitions and march, and that's all great. But until you basically do- dox these motherfuckers the way I was, where my address was put online, my mother got death threats in her retirement village. She's 98 years old. Wow. My sister got death threats in the hospital. She was in the hospital for cancer, and she got death threats until the day she died. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. That's I meant good. to keep it light, but no, it's fine. Please. I just want people to know, like these Trumpers, they get mobilized and don't let them see you down, though. Fuck. Even them. me as a white person, like I didn't know white people were this fucking bad and racist. And really? Yes. Yes, I did not know that. When you're, well, you know this. When you're in the arts, yeah. it's different. When you start out the gate, you're hanging with gay people and black people and Asian people, and that's kind of the great thing about the arts. Mm-hmm. So. I thought it was always like me because I've been told I'm ugly and too old and I look like, you know, Bride of Chucky and all this other stuff. So, Well, that's the beauty of, of privilege, though. The beauty of being white and privileged is that you don't have to worry about 
the biases and the prejudices. Well, right. I'm just you trying just to think it's you. Yes. Like, you know? Yeah. And I just thought, okay, I'm just going to try to fight for, I get it. I'm, I'm different. I'm not the most gorgeous person in the world. I just want to be able to make a living. And this experience has really taught me so much. So, you know, from the jump, I think it's now the time for everybody to come out of the shadows. And that's what I do. So I'll Kathy, tell you, is this going to be a movie or something? Nobody some will point? make. Nobody has the balls to do a special. Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to come back. Yeah, I think it's going to I love your word yet because no, I want to stay hopeful. I, I want to stay so. hopeful. And you got your own money, so you can do things on your own. Because well. Kathy, to be but honest, that's what I want to say to your right. listeners: keep your money. Mm-hmm. Like right. I get it. And and those of you that become successful, sometimes it happens quickly, sometimes it doesn't. But keep your money because you never know when it's going to be a rainy day. And honey, I had a monsoon. Yeah, you sure did. So I'm not saying I'm not like a billionaire. And trust me, I people that are mad at me can buy and sell me a ten times over. But it it was, you know, you, I, you I, didn't even think you'd be at the point where you'd be going back on tour again. I didn't think I was ever going to. So work you again. never know what's going to yeah. happen. Absolutely, that's algorithm, right. My algorithm kind of lit for you. Somebody somebody <laughs> just replied Jerry Seinfeld with the demon emoji. I don't know what that means. Yeah, he didn't have my back at all. Okay, what do you do? Uh, I get, you know, I'm going to be honest. I didn't look at a lot of the, mm-hmm. as they say, the bad press. Right. But I do know, you know, many, many, many people, you know, really jumped the gun and were very happy to get on the bandwagon of she's the devil. She's, you know, she's glorifying decapitation. Mm. Excuse me. I've been in war zones. So, no, no. This was what many comedians have done over the years. A part of our job, if you're a certain kind of comedian, and I've always been a, in your face style always comedian. Edgy, always be mm-hmm. Always that's yeah. right. And I, I do believe it's a comedian's job to shine a light on things, good, bad, or indifferent, and start a conversation and hopefully it can have some humor in it. But you gotta start it somehow. Well, shout out to Cat Williams. Well, yeah, somebody that's said, right. Somebody, that's right. Somebody, <laughs> somebody did reply to me, I hope someone beats you beats you and her ass, you prick. No. And somebody wow. else said, Me too, I love her. Somebody else said, Well, have her on the Breakfast Club then. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else said, "Get her on the Breakfast Club, then, fam." So it's cool. Like, ask, do you bring? You don't bring that. The head is done. You don't bring that with you on tour. That's, no, but that's it, not, is it part of the? Okay, first of all, one of the things I, I think the head I, is done. But one of the head. things I still laugh at is that even when, um, like, the idea that people thought I really was able to decapitate the president and then sew his head back on, is I'm just going to say his this. son cried, Kathy. Um, Baron I think cried. Baron has seen worse. The Access Hollywood tape alone. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. Can you imagine what Melanie has seen? <laughs> you heard me. I called her Melanie. Okay. That's it. <laughs> and by the way, for a guy who hates immigrants, he bought two. Remember, he bought Ivana first. Oh, my Went goodness. to Czechoslovakia. Don't act so shocked. <laughs> <laughs> then he aged her out of the system like Menudo. Put in Marla, the showgirl. Her name was Marla. Uh, then he aged out Marla of the yeah. system. And then he went to Slovenia and uh, bought Melania. Put her in a crate and sh- sent her over. Yeah. So for a guy who hates immigrants... He likes buying them and That's why him. I think Melania is so quiet because she don't want to get deported. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, no, I think she does want to. She's oh, like, she get right? as far away as possible. I think, I think, um, I think she's just Feckless wants to go with uh, Trudeau, the prime minister of Canada, because he's hotter <laughs> than Kushner, the uh, doughy uh, husband. Doughy. Do you have empathy for Roseanne? No. Okay. I, I, no, I did not see that coming. Not see it, it coming. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I'm sorry. And, by the way, Come on. There is a picture of her dressed as Hitler putting Jew cookies in an oven. Fact. We're know, done. I don't know how you work again in Hollywood after doing a picture like that. Well, you don't. I mean, I mean, yeah. And by the way, ABC, like, giving her this opportunity to reboot the show. You know, everyone thought it was going to be like it was. I guess they hadn't checked her social. Mm-hmm. But I don't know what made her turn. But something did. And, I, you know, mm. and so they brought... By the way, when the Roseanne scandal was happening... They ginned up my scandal again because Sarah Fuckabee tried to tie me in with Roseanne and Samantha B. So I had another day, and I'm sure you guys have all experienced this, where your phone lights up in a bad way. Right. Yes. And it's all these texts from your friends going, are you okay? <laughs> Call me if you need me. Have you seen the TV yet? And so I'm like, now what? And so, yeah, they're, they're still coming for me. Just like Cap, they are still mm. coming for me. I, and think so, that, I think Roseanne is a great example because... You know, her dressing up as Hitler yeah. and putting the stuff in the oven, the cookies in the oven, like that was like, still that's a just as, to me, that's just as bad as decapitating a pre- sitting president. That's yeah. Like, way worse. So, but way she, worse. But she works. I also don't believe in white supremacy. And mm-hmm. she really has those beliefs for real. Right. Like, I'm, I'm obnoxious. I do my dick jokes. I do my Kardashian stories. I now have a heck of a story to tell. 
But yeah, I'm not doing, I'm, I don't actually have those feelings. And by the way, uh, you know, if she didn't, maybe it could have been spun a different way. But that's the thing that if you look at her actual social, she, the day she got fired, she also tweeted that one of the Parkland shooting survivors was a Nazi. I know. So, but yeah, Samantha B yeah, and weird. Michelle yeah, Wolf. How can you really support how does she that's have right. a job? That's weird. Mm-hmm. I know. Now, why did you apologize in the first place? Because you're, you're, you're so I'll tell you why. harsh about it now. I know. And Kat was yeah. so mad at me. He's like, oh, I said, Kat, let me tell you, you something. Let Kat down. I, I, I did. I let him down. He's going to a lot of I'll tell time. you why. Rosie O'Donnell called me, and she is the expert at being trolled by Donald Trump. Like, mm-hmm. he's been after her for 12 years. And she said, and this is how the Trump wood chipper framed it. She said, you've got to take, you've got to apologize. People think you're really, really an ISIS. And I was laughing. I thought she was kidding, and I hung up. I was like, I'll talk to you later. You're right. You know comics. <laughs> Good one. And then she called back, and she said a famous line. She said, what if Daniel Pearl's mother saw this? He's a journalist that was literally decapitated. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, that's what made me do the apology. Like mm-hmm. I said, I have performed overseas. I've performed at Walter Reed Medical Center here. I have relationships with two veterans groups. And I thought, I get it. That could be traumatizing. Making light of decapitation. That's right. Gotcha. Right. And so, honestly, it was an apology almost for her alone. And then I also didn't realize they were going to throw in a bunch of other crazy lies, like I said, that I had actually joined ISIS, which oh, I don't no, think, goodness. you know, I don't think they, I don't think I could even do the training, frankly. I could break a hip. I could break a hip. Yeah. And so, uh, <laughs> so the apology was a disaster. And then I did a press conference, which was a disaster, and um, tried to explain myself. And so then I thought, all right, I'm just going to hunker down, try to stay alive. And it was, in fact, Jim Carrey who said, <clears throat> take the time you need, figure out how to put it through. He, he had this great line, your Kathy Griffin comedy prism. And he said, you know, Kathy, at the end of this, you're going to have a story that any comic would give their right arm to have. Mm-hmm. He said, you have basically had the worst president in our history put his thumb on the shoulder of your life. He goes, you can't keep this in. Right. you got to tell it. So it took a while to process, took a while to process, writing, 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 writing. Um, went and did, like I said, 15 countries overseas. At, by the way, every single country that I did, and I'm, I am not glorifying violence, mm-hmm. but when they saw that photo... They cheered Mm because they hate Trump so much. And overseas, they're used to that imagery in like Der Spiegel or Charlie Hebdo. And and I didn't know the photographer was going to give it to freaking TMZ, by the way. I thought it would be like some artsy revolutionary magazine or something. Was the photographer banned from anything after that? No, he he got a Netflix series. Wow. Really? Wow. 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 I think you're taking a lot of heat for uh, his idea. Well, I asked him to give me the copyright, and I'll tell you Mm -hmm. why. I said, look, this picture changed my life, and it's going to haunt me forever. Like, you know, I, I, every time I go to an airport, you know, people, I walk down the street, people grab me and call me a terrorist. Um, mm. I can't tell you. It happens almost daily. You need better security if they you grab you. You need FOI, you. Fruit of Islam. I'm telling you. <laughs> so Bunch you of brothers you with the last name alone? Muhammad. I don't go anywhere alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and people are bold. Like, right. it, with this Trump environment, white people are Oh, yeah. I love hearing a white woman say this. Honey, these... <laughs> and, know it's not just and you know, uh, no, All right, you're truth. gonna love this. I'm not talking to white bitches. I am not talking to white bitches. And I don't care if they're my audience. All these fucking bitches that didn't vote for Hillary, there's just something about her. I just don't know what it is. I just don't know. And every time I go, look, don't even start with your freaking Jill Stein. You don't understand. Any vote that isn't for Hillary is a vote for Trump. Mm-hmm. You know, and so for me, a lot lifelong feminist to read that white women voted for Trump more than Hillary is such a letdown. Not talking to them. Not talking to them. That is some bullshit. Wake up, ladies. It's crazy to me that none of these women in Hollywood reached out to you at all. At all. Like not one. No. None of the strong feminists, the Lena Dunham's of the world. No. The, like wow. nobody. No. Well, the Breakfast Club got you back. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for coming. That, Give us some what... of those dates that you have. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sure the White House will be sure. emailing <laughs> iHeart today. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, mind you, we've had Minister Farrakhan on this That's show. Right. We've had some very explosive people. They're going to be like, nope, Kathy Griffin was That's the right. last straw. That's right, right, right. <laughs> Kathy Griffin's going to give us some of her dates And right don't now, even and joke we... that I'm going to an ISIS meeting after this. Don't nope. even joke that. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm also, uh, by the way, I'm also very, very lucky and privileged to be playing like the what I call the great halls. But what I want to tell you is I'm now producing my shows myself, mm-hmm. which means to play Radio City, I personally wire $250,000 for the rent. 
Wow. Because I can't even count on Live Nation or AEG. None of those guys are going to have my back because I'm a woman. Uh, is my humble opinion. All right. So Wednesday, I am at the Arsht in Miami. Beautiful venue. You didn't I'm go at September Bob 8th, right? Aren't you September 8th? Aren't you in D.C.? Uh, I, yeah, I just did. Oh, you just did that? My I bad. just did a D.C. show. Yeah, okay, September 8th past. Okay. Yeah, 3,000 people. I'm reading it. I'm sorry. 3,000 people. They were on their feet. It was fantastic. Okay. So my next shows are Miami, Orlando, Columbus, Atlanta. Um, Philly. Philly. I'm doing a double, two shows. Minneapolis, Detroit, St. Louis, and Phoenix. Word of advice. Tweet yes. Kathy Griffin. Just give them one website to go to. <laughs> KathyGriffin.com. KathyGriffin.com. Yeah, really Sign up now. for the email and text list. Not the old-fashioned, you know, mailers. Ha- mailers. No, okay. Right. <laughs> no Tweet her and get some death threats. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's well, right. And good luck one. to all of your timelines. Yes, and do me one favor. Yes. Whenever you're um, talking about any of these people, just call them fuckboys. How do I start? I mean, I have such a long any, list. Any, anybody you talk, any of these guys you don't like, just call them fuckboys. Fuckboys. Yeah. Okay. I'm all for it. There you go. Okay. That's well, the term. Well, thank you for joining us. We you appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Anytime I'm such a town, fan. Thank you, you Kathy. I hope you we mean it. Yes, we do. All right. Thanks, you guys. All right. It's Kathy Griffin. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning.